Hey guys. <laughs> wow, it's so great to be with you again. And as you can see, I'm not in my house. So <laughs> we're at a different place right now and I am in a rocking chair. You see? Ooh. So I really feel like a grandma. No, I'm baby I was babysitting today. So at my on um little grandbaby's house but thank you so much for tuning in everyone don't be distracted if i you know go rocking in my rocking chair <laughs> like that and i do like rocking chairs i do like you know swings and those kind of things but thank you so much every single one all oh, hearts back to you hey everyone thank you so much for watching thank you thank you thank you so much well today um, we're still on our topic. You're already healed. This is our whole week of talking about that you are already healed. Hey, Evelyn. Who love you. Love you all, guys. Love you so much. <laughs> but at first, I want to light out a few people because yesterday I forgot. <laughs> I just wanted to get into the word. So today, I want to light out Wendy. And let me, let me tell you up front... I'm not saying people's last names because not everyone likes that. If you don't mind, that's okay. Then you just tell me. But that's why I only say, uh, say the, mention their first name. So Wendy, thank you so much for watching, for listening, for subscribing, for tuning in. Thank you so much. A real heartfelt thank you. And also Lulu, I like your name. Lulu, thank you so much for watching, for listening. Thank you. I see it as support to this ministry. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So that's, those are the two people I want to light out. Well, I hope you can hear me because it sounds different, but it's just because I'm not at home. That's the thing. Hey, Caroline. Yes, that's so great. Kenya. Woo. So we got Ireland. We got Kenya. We got Nepal. We got, I think, Texas. We got... Uh, all kinds of places. This is so great. You see how the Lord is connecting us. And I do have to tell you, I love you so much. My life at five family, because you are a part of my family now, you know, I pray for you. And even if you, I'm just telling you because a lot of people, they don't know it. I pray for you. I mention your name when I'm in prayer with the Lord, you know, asking him if he has got something to uh, for me to tell you so for me you are like family my sisters my brothers thank you so much oh man i just love you guys so much it's so great but today i wanted to talk about all things are possible because i got the great one of the greatest questions ever it's not uh how do you say it it's not nice what is happening but this is such a good question and actually i want to talk about that question but first all things are possible to him who believes. When we go to Mark 9. Hey, Missouri, that's so great. Oh, oh, it's so great. Hey, Tammy, great. You just put it in the, in the comments where you're from. When I look at it, I will, I will say it. It's so great. Woo, thank you, Lord. Well, you know, Jesus, he was up on the mountain. And then when he came down, um, a father came to him and told him, and, well, actually asked him, he said, hey, can you please help me with my son? I'm paraphrasing. Help me with my son because my son, sometimes the demonic spirit, it lets him fall in the water and then also in the fire, those kind of things. And then Jesus came and he was like, Jesus was a bit upset with this. <laughs> let, me, let me say it like that. He was a bit upset, like, man, couldn't my disciples get this boy healed? So that's where this story is. Hey, Florida. Yes. It's warm there, right? In Florida. I want to come. I like the sun, guys. <laughs> I like sunny weather. But I think, um, how do you say that? I think snow and those guys. Oh, I think it's so beautiful. I also like snow. So but I also like sun. Okay, let's, let's go further. <laughs> so. That's where the story is. Okay, listen to this. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said to him, he said to the, the, the father, he said, if you can believe, 
all things are possible to him who believes. All things, that means pass. That's a, a Greek word, pass. And it means each, the whole, every, any, everything. So all things are possible. They are able. They can, things, uh, things can be done only if we believe. Oh man, I just love this part. But it's not really this part I'm focusing on. So I'm going to go to another part. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Lucho. <laughs> so great to see you. When we go to Matthew, I, I don't really like giving too many um, scriptures because I, I've seen in the past that people are like, what did she say? She talked about this. She talked about that. But I have to get to these things. Things because I have to get into the nitty gritty of the things because people, you're already healed. Oh, okay. Listen, <laughs> Matthew 17. It's the same story but a different uh, gospel. So now Jesus is telling on uh, this. It's about the same thing. The Father tells him. Uh, oftentimes he falls into the fire and oftentimes into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Okay. Then Jesus answered, verse 17, and said, Oh, faithless and perfect generation, how long shall I, shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. So you can see that Jesus was upset. Like I told you, he was like, what? My disciples couldn't do it. He was like, huh? okay. But Jesus rebuked that demon. So I'm not saying that every sickness is demonic, but I've seen a lot of sicknesses. They are demonic. Jesus rebuked the demon. He charged him like, get out, you know, stop it. Go. What I've been telling you that authority now you see Jesus rebuking the demon. He wasn't talking to the boy. He wasn't talking to the father. No, he was talking to the demon. So a lot of times when people think that I am like um, angry, I'm not angry at people. Of course not. I'm really, I hate, so I hate sickness. Just like, oh, if, if it would be standing in front of me, I would just punch it. But that's how I see it. I see it like it's a demon. It's a person without a body and it's trying to hurt these people it's trying to get them killed to steal to kill and destroy that's why i get so like oh so angry at sickness i hate sickness i hate disease i was there once i didn't like it it wasn't good okay let's move on and then the disciples came to jesus privately because they were like Wait a minute, we cannot ask in front of everyone because do you know that I pray for people a lot? I see people healed, but I also see people not healed at that moment. So I'm like that. I don't get disturbed. I just ask Papa, hey, what's going on? Was it me? Or was it something with the person? So I always ask questions. Papa, hey, but there are people ashamed that uh, if they cannot get themselves healed, they feel like they they feel shame. There are people getting uh, feeling ashamed if they prayed for someone and the person did not get healed. Stop the shame. Stop it. Just stop that. In the name of Jesus, I command that shame to stop because it's not from Papa God. You do not have to be ashamed if you're not healed and you have been praying. You have been uh, uh, commanding, taking your authority, speaking the word. Don't feel ashamed. And I know why I'm saying this. These, these disciples, they went to Jesus privately because they felt shame. It didn't say that here, but I, I can just figure out why would you ask him privately? Why didn't they just after the boy was cured said, hey, Jesus, why couldn't we heal the boy? You know, right then and there. But they felt ashamed. So that's why when they were alone with Jesus, there was no one there. Then they asked him, why couldn't we heal the boy? And these, these um, disciples, they had already healed people. They already cast out demons, cleansed the lepers, you know, those kind of things. They already did those things. So why couldn't they heal the boy? Well, the thing is, why I'm telling you about this piece of shame, a lot of people who are watching or who will watch, hey, Sarah, so great to see you. You know, a lot of people, 
you're watching and you feel that shame or like a discouragement or like uh, a disappointment, but I'm talking about shame right now. It, you feel like you're, you're ashamed of yourself, that you're not healed yet or that you haven't got your physical manifestation yet. Please don't feel like that. I feel uh, tears coming up here. So someone is dealing with this thing of shame because you couldn't get someone healed or you couldn't get yourself healed. I felt tears here. So some, someone is dealing with that shame. I speak that you get out of shame because it's not your fault. Why would you feel the shame? The healing power of Jesus on the inside of us. Yes, it is. But it can be a lot of things. Why, why it is not happening. Sometimes I pray for people and I just use like one sentence. They're healed. Sometimes I pray for people like over and over again. I don't see the physical manifestation. It goes slowly. Sometimes I even prayed for one person. It just happened to me once. I prayed with a person. I saw things getting better. That's what I thought. And then all of a sudden, the person died. When the person died, I was like, but Papa, there was no need to die. I just know for, for a fact she was healed. And then he said, uh, when I heard the story, she didn't want to be raised from the dead. She wanted to stay with Papa. So, okay, but I didn't like that. But shame was not the thing that I felt at that moment. I just go and ask Papa, okay, Papa, show me from the word. Tell me what was going on. Hey, Angie, so nice to see you. Everyone, stop feeling ashamed. It will just block you more. It will make your, your shoulders feel like heavy, like, oh, Cindy is telling me these things and I know I understand it and I'm doing it. I'm trying to do it, but I don't see my physical manifestation. Stop the shame. You were already healed 2000 years ago. That's the reason why I'm praying for people. I'm not even praying. I'm, I'm healing the sick. Why? Because I know it's already a done deal. So it's nothing of me. It has nothing to do with me. And yet it has because I have to speak. I have to be bold and just speak to bodies and just command that healing. But shame it's got no place. So don't let it have place in your heart. Okay? Promise me that. And if there's shame, you tell that shame to go. Say, shame, you're not, you're not from me. You're not from Papa God. So go. Just tell it, get out. Okay? Let's move on. And then Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. Hey, Cheryl, great to see you. You see what is happening? I'm showing you two totally opposite verses. Because in Mark 9, he's telling the father, if you can believe, all things are possible to, to him who believes. Well, that belief he's talking about, meaning confident trust, placing your trust in Jesus, placing your trust in in the words that you're hearing. While I'm speaking, faith is going forward. Healing is going forward. There's healing in my words. There's faith because I'm speaking the spirit-filled, life-giving words of Papa God. So faith is rising up on the inside of you. It's stirred up. It's stirred up. So in the name of Jesus, I commend you get a revelation of these things that I'm talking about because all things are possible. If all things are possible and all means all, the whole, each and everything, then that Physical manifestation is also possible, but it's possible because Jesus told us that by his stripes, 1 Peter 2, 24, we were healed and it's were, it's not be healed, maybe be healed, uh, started to get healed and uh, maybe somewhere, someday get healed. Someday is not even a day, you receive the healing someday. No, we were healed. It's the past tense. It's already been done. It's already in the past. It's already done. So that's why I am so sure, hundred percent sure that every single one of you, you were already healed because the word told me and I've placed all my trust. And you might say, ah, that cannot be Cindy, but let me tell you, 
Because a lot of people, I told you yesterday when we talked about you need to have a vision, a vision of your health, a vision seeing yourself healthy. You need to get it on the inside in your heart because your heart and your mouth need to become one in agreement and then your action will show those things. Oh man. Now listen to me. I told you yesterday because you see me, you know, I can wave my arms. Yeah, I can do everything. I can bow down everything. Nothing is hurting me no more. But there was a time that it was hurting me, that it was difficult. You see me now and it looks like I'm, I'm still not one of the, how do you say it? Uh, the heaviest person, but I was never, this was how I looked all of my life. I don't know better, but the thing is you see me now, you hear me now. I can scream. I can talk loud, but I could not do that. There was a time I could not do that. And the only reason that I can do it today is because I, I just went over into something. I placed all of my trust. I took it all, all. And I placed my trust in this word. I placed my trust in this word. And it wasn't easy because I couldn't see it. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't touch it. You know, I couldn't smell it. I couldn't taste. I couldn't see my health on the outside in my natural outer realm. What I could see if I would look at myself was everything that I didn't want to see. Everything that was messed up on my body, everything that didn't look good. I, if I have to say it, I looked like death. My complexion was grayish, it was strange. One day my daughter said, there was no life in your eyes anymore. So I looked like death. You don't see that, no. <laughs> but it's because I stepped over and placed all my trust in this word and not in this particular Bible first, but every Bible first that I took as my own, that became my own people. It was not that I heard Andrew Romick tell me. So that's why I acted. Yes, I listened day and night to his teachings. Those were the teachings that got me stirred up on the inside. It just, it, it breathed faith on the inside of me, how to receive God's best. I didn't even listen to uh, God wants you well, for instance. It, it was, you already got it. Those kind of things uh, the believer's authority. It stirred something up on the inside of me. And I knew for a fact I wasn't supposed to, to be sick. I wasn't supposed to die. I wasn't supposed to live infirm all of my life. I wasn't supposed uh, to, to look like that. So I place all my trust in this word, but I cannot do it for you. That part believing and all things are possible for him who believes. It means confident trust. You place that trust in him. And I had to do that for me. It was sink or swim. It was live or die. It was a death or life situation. And that, oh man, I can almost cry when I think about it. Because I had to make a choice. I told you the first day, you have to make the decision. I cannot make it for you. Death or life, you decide. Well, the Lord told us, well, let me let, me, let, me let you in on a secret. Choose life. I chose life. And you know what, what I chose? I chose the word above every single thing that I saw on my body that I noticed that my body did not have. But I want to show you these two verses because these disciples could not get that boy cured. You know why? Do you, what, do you know what I tell my team? We've, we are going to have 14th of November, this Saturday, a healing service. And you're so welcome to live stream. I have a translator. So you're so welcome to live stream. But I tell my team, I say, I always tell them this. Whenever you go and pray for someone, don't ever look with your physical eyes. Don't you dare do that. If you would go into a hospital right now, we're not allowed to go into a hospital just like that. So we haven't been in hospitals. But if you go into the hospital and you are looking at every tube, at everything that's inserted, the IV, you see the, the person gasping for bread, like, 
you know, breathing terribly, difficulty and all. And when you look at that things, at those things, it will catch you. It will do something in your heart. It will get you into unbelief. Because these disciples, Jesus told them, it's because of your unbelief. Because they saw what happened to the boy. Oh, he fell into the water and he fell into the fire. Well, in the name of Jesus, I feel a fire in my hands. And I command right now that fire just to flow in Jesus' name. Into your body, into your eyes, into your ears, into your organs. And fire me, fire you to someone else that needs that healing right now. Oh, Ravakasaya. I never felt this before, but I feel it right now. It's in my hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. I command that healing power right now flowing through you in Jesus' name. I'm getting all warm and hot <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's so great. But it was that unbelief. Let me tell you about myself. I was in unbelief. At first, I was in unbelief. And then when I made that decision, something just happened on the inside. I let that word enter my heart. I told my heart because I, I'm telling you, I speak to my mountains. I speak to my body. So I told my heart, my mind, everything that was there, my soul, my nefesh, my brain, everything that's there, my affection, my appetite, emotions, feelings. I commanded them in the name of Jesus. I told them, don't you dare. And I listened to the carnal mind anymore. I said, carnal mind, step outside, go and stand at the car. I don't need you right now. That's how I spoke uh, to my body. I said, heart, mind, I command you this word. And I always go back to first Peter two twenty four, but it's every single scripture about healing, but it's just the one I just adopted i just took it as myself i just embraced it accepted say yes to it and i agreed with it so i told my mind i said you every other junk that was told me by nurses by doctors i commend it out the door you don't even think about those things i commend those things nullified nullified and you take this bible first and you keep it you store it and the moment i think about something else you bring it up. And I did it also with a different kind of verse. So 3 John 1, 2, for instance, as his beloved, he wished, he wills, he prayed above all things that I see he may prosper and I be in health, even as my soul prosper. And I told my mind to do it. You know what happened? One day my mind wanted to wander off and tell me how terrible it was you know my, my, my mind was speaking how terrible it was and this was happening and the pain was this and I got angry I said stop it I did not tell you to, to tell me these things and all of a sudden I just felt it rising up and I saw in front of me third John 1 2 and I was like yes and I said yes then you bring the word up okay so I was also in unbelief at first, but I had to place my trust, just step over something. And what that something is, I think that it's unbelief. <laughs> I just stepped over it and placed my trust in the word. So no matter what I was feeling, seeing, hearing, touching, you know, smelling, tasting, I didn't care no more. I didn't care no more. Okay. So those two things I want to show you. All things are possible for him who believes, who places his or hers trust in the Lord, a confident trust. What, you know what I tell, when I told you about resting in his finished work, it's like, you know, when you, there's someone standing behind you and let's say it's Jesus. And then you go like, because I know he will catch me. I'm just resting in his finished work. It has nothing to do with me. I couldn't do it. He did it all. And because he did it, and I told you about it that day that Jesus came into my room and he told me and he looked like, oh man, I didn't want to look at him. It was gruesome what I saw. It, it was like he, I, I could see his bones, blood. It was, I didn't want to hold him, but he came and he held me like that. And I was like, oh, oh I don't want to, I don't want to cause him pain because of all of the cuts, the bruises and everything. I was just like, oh. but then. 
I hugged him and then he spoke into my ear. He said, Cindy, take everything I died to give you. And I was like, whoa. But that's the same he's telling you. Everything he died to give you, take it. It's yours. You're already healed. And all things are possible for him who believes. So right now I speak in the name of Jesus. If it's difficult to place your trust in him because of a unbelief, I speak in the name of Jesus that your eyes are opened like Gehazi's eyes. You know, the servant of Elisha were opened. I speak that your eyes are open and that you can see the health, the healing, that you can see everything that the Lord has already placed on the inside of you. It's already a done deal. You are already healed. I know it sounds so strange, but I speak that you get a revelation of that and that that unbelief, I command it right now. I bind you on belief. I command you shut your mouth in the name of Jesus right now. You don't speak. You have no right of speaking right now. And that Holy Spirit's voice becomes so clear to you. And then you can hear him speaking for yourself. Okay, let me get to the, the question. I just think this is just an amazing question. Um, at night, the symptoms are worse. It's like a dark cloud hovering over me that feels like death. Images. She, she has images of a funeral and devastation with her children and her dreams of death. And then she asked me, how did you handle it? I had those same things. I saw myself dead. I, I saw my funeral. And here's the deal. The moment you step over those things, they have no right to be there no more. So the moment I understood that I was already healed and that day I made that decision, it's like I, I drew a, li a line in the sand. It was like those dreams, those feelings had no effect on me any, any longer. I don't say they didn't try to come. They did. But I use the word in everything. I told you yesterday, I started seeing myself on the inside, whole, healthy, cooking again, cleaning again, uh, going somewhere with my children, taking my dog outside, walking the dog. I saw it first on the inside. If you don't do that, if you don't see that, If you don't have that, you're like a person without a vision, you will perish. Abram had to do it. God made him look up and see the stars. God made him look down and see the sand at the seashore. Uh, see the sand in the desert. Every single one had to do that. Do you know that Hannah, when she, her, she was barren, but Nina was just oh terrible with Hannah. Hannah would cry. Her husband Elkanah would say, hey, am I not worth more than seven children? You know, he was like, why are you crying? But she wanted a baby. She was barren. When she went to the, to the temple, Eli, who was already corrupt, actually his sons, but he never told his sons that the things they were doing were not right in God's eyes. He thought that she was like, an, uh, she had been drinking. But she wasn't. She was spilling out everything, telling the Lord everything. And then when Eli said, when he understood, oh, she's not, an, uh, she had not been drinking. He said, woman, it's yours. I'm paraphrasing, but it's yours. Do you know that she stood up? Her whole complexion changed. She went to, to, uh, she went, uh, to the house. For her, she already had a baby. She already had a child. For her, it was done when she stood up. Because if you go, go and read it for yourself uh, in the book of Samuel. Go and read it for yourself. That all of a sudden, the things that Penina did, it didn't matter to her no more. Everything was, she knew. She had the baby. But did she have the baby when she stood up? Was it already nine months later? No. She saw it on the inside. 
She knew that 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 she had a baby boy. And she, she did what she told the Lord. She gave Samuel to uh, Papa God and he became like Samuel the prophet and she had more children. But never again can we hear that she cried. That she was lonely, that she felt like, oh, and, uh, and Panina this. And so we need to do the same people because if you harbor something too long, your mind is like a spiritual womb. Every seed that comes in and you harbor it, it will grow. It will become something. What I did was every single thing that had to do with death, I cut it off every single thing. So if a dream, even a dream, I, I told you I had demons come into my room trying to, I think, kill me or whatever. I don't know, but I fought them. Well, actually, I defended myself and I already told you about how I did that. So every single thing that had death in it, I just stopped it. I stopped it. It's not mine. Every thought with death, the first days I had to fight against you know I had to take captive and take captive and take captive and pull down the stronghold and it but after a while I think maybe two three days or something they were like oh, they were exhausted they said oh Cindy's a lost case we cannot get we cannot enter her mind no more because they couldn't I knew that 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 I was healed and I was going to live so I hope it answers a, a, a lot of your question but I had the same thing I just dealt with it that I did not tolerate it. I kept on punching them in the face when those thoughts wanted to come and I reversed them. I flipped the script every single time I flipped the script. I told, I, I kept on telling, no, I'm going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And then I saw myself. I didn't see this, but I saw myself talking about how I was healed. Hey, Bali. How I was healed, how I was cured, how the word healed me. I saw myself talking to one person or to a lot of people. I saw myself declaring the word and telling people I did not die. I lived and now I'm declaring the works of the Lord. You have to get a picture on the inside seeing yourself healed. You have to get that picture on the inside seeing yourself healed. And you have to hold on to that picture. How do you get those pictures? Those pictures of faith, those pictures of life. You take the word. I don't know what word, what Bible first. You, you just take as your own and no one can take it from you. No one can steal it from you. No one. They have to kill me to get it. They have to just beat me to death and still they cannot get it because it's on the inside of me. It's the truth. It's real to me. I place my trust in it. My heart and mouth are in agreement with that Bible first and no one can take it. No one can turn me around. And that's what Anna stops death. But I also spoke against death. So I told that spirit of death because I know it came. The, the moments I felt it two times, I truly felt death. Beginning at my feet, it, it, it started to get cold and it tried to come up. And it was the first time was when I gave up in the hospital. And then my little girl, when she put her, hand, uh, her, her head here and she started praying in tongues until she broke, she just cried. But something was stirred up on the inside of me. I wanted to give up. I never told my children. And then all of a sudden, my oldest son, he said, Mom, Mom, look into my eyes. Look into my eyes. When I looked into his eyes, it was like I was looking into the eyes of Jesus. So it was like Jesus speaking through him. But that was a spirit of death. So I knew a spirit of death really wanted me gone and out. A guy came, uh, not a, he not came to my house, but I was at a service and he, he, we never met, never spoke to him before. He's from Mexico. And then he turned to me, he said, Satan's trying to kill you. And at first I wanted to, to cry like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? And then I, I thought like, wait a minute, then I've got something on the inside of me that he tries to hinder, tries to keep away. So I got like, wait a minute. So I knew that spirit of death was, you know, trying to get me to die. And one day I was lying on the couch and I was thinking about it just a tad too long. 
And I knew this is it. It's coming again. But I had to speak. That's why I always tell you, take your authority, command the things to go. Don't, don't go around the bush. No, speak specifically. So I spoke. I said, you foul spirit of death. I command you get out in the name of Jesus. You know, it moved. Everything was okay. And I heard the Lord and he said, because it's not your time to come. I said, yes, I understand. It's not my time to come. I said, okay, Papa God, I'm going to fight with everything I have. And then I got a scripture. And do you know, I cannot find the scripture. I, I do think I know where it is. I, I, I fought. I said, you know, I'm going to fight. And I saw in that scripture, fight. I think it's fight the good fight of faith, but it was in a different translation. And I fought. I knew it had to take a little bit of effort from me because I had to use my body as a weapon. That was the effort. Use my body as a weapon. Because Jesus, he had already done it. And the only thing is this, people. You know, we have an enemy. All because Adam and Eve, they ate from the forbidden fruit. So we have an enemy. That's why, that's why we have to defend what is rightfully ours. And this enemy is already defeated. He is a loser. He is a nothing. But he deceives you. He tries and tell you, you will never get out of it. Don't listen to what Cindy is telling you. She's just babbling. Because yeah, God did it for her, but he will not do it for you. He's a liar. He just lies to you. People, I always tell you, I wish I could just open up your mind and place these things in, on the inside. The devil is a deceiver. He's a liar. He's lying to you. When I stepped over unbelief and I commanded unbelief to get out, to move out, you know, carnal mind, get out, stand at the door, uh, stand at the car. I don't need you. Things started changing. You take your authority. They are more, those demons are more afraid of you than you are afraid of them. That pain is more afraid of you than you have to be afraid of the pain. You know, every kind of sickness and disease, you got power and authority over them. Any kind of demon, any kind of oppression. You know why? Because the word tells us, Matthew 10, you can read it for yourself. Jesus himself gave you that power to heal all kinds of sickness and disease and over all unclean spirits. You got that. It's here. But because it's here on, in the spiritual realm, in your spirit, you cannot see it. You think it's not there. The devil is deceiving you. Oh, hallelujah. But I like it because the same lady who asked me the question, she said, Cindy, please keep on repeating. Keep on telling yourself. Because I said, Papa, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Just show me. Then tell me how to bring it from a different slant. He told me, he said, Cindy, keep on keeping it simple. Keep on telling the same things. And, the, and this lady, when she asked the question, she told me the same thing. So I knew this was a confirmation from Papa God. People, you are already healed. It's past tense. Satan tries to stop you. But do you know that he cannot? He couldn't stop Jesus from rising from the dead. He couldn't. He did everything that he could do. Everything that was in his power. He tried and do it. You know, Jesus... He's seated at Papa's right hand. I'm doing this, but he's here living on the inside of us. Hey! You know, he's there seated far above all principality and power. And, and you know, every, dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come, meaning every kind of sickness and disease that you're having, dealing with, seeing, you know, he's seated above that. And you are too. I'm going to leave it at this because there's so much more that I can tell. But tomorrow we're going to get into it even much more deeper. So right now, I don't know if you can, but place your hands if you can on the screen. I feel the power of Papa God, that power of health and healing. Just flow, 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 flow in Jesus' name. I command it in the name of Jesus that 
fire go into the bones that fire go into the organs where there are no organs i command organs are being formed right now i command creative miracles right now i command you out of the wheelchair right now i command that you can eat each and everything you foul spirit of death in the name of jesus i bind you i command you shut up you don't speak no more i command you get off get off back off in jesus name her God doesn't want her to die. Everyone who deals with the spirit of death in the name of Jesus, I command death. Stop. Stop it. Right now in Jesus' name. And I speak life over you. I command life over you. Into your bones. Into your body. That resurrection life that devil could not stop. No demon in hell can stop it. And I speak it into your bones. I speak it into your organs. I speak it into your skin. I speak it into your eyes, into your mouth. Everywhere where you need the healing, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. And I command sweet sleep. Because the Lord, Papa God, He's giving you that. That's yours. Take it. Take the sleep. Take the health. Take it. Oh, my hands are just burning. Angels of hell, go, go, go into the houses wherever they are in Jesus' name. Every muscle, I command you, just loosened, relaxed in Jesus' name. Okay, guys, I never felt that before while I was speaking. So I just know things are happening. Things are just happening. All things are possible. Yes, shame, you go in Jesus' name. You leave them alone. You got nothing to be ashamed for. You are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Stand, keep on standing in that position. You are the beloved. And who Papa God is already well pleased. You know when he spoke those words, we were not even there. He's well pleased with you. He chose you. Hallelujah. Yes, there's plenty of life and energy. Oh, yes, Terry, that's great. I just speak all your spiritual eyes. Just open up that you can see. You can see it. Hallelujah. Yes, rest in his finished work. If anyone, thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. Because our testimony is literally saving lives. I know, I know for a fact, every single one of you, and everyone who will listen in the future, you got a testimony. And don't be, don't be frightened to tell your testimony, even if it has just begun like this. Start saying it to yourself. Start speaking to yourself in the mirror and telling yourself the testimony. Start doing that. And you will save lives. Because I'm not speaking just for what? Did I get my name out? No, I'm speaking these things to you because... You need to get your testimony and you need to go. That's how Holy Spirit taught, taught me. He said, Cindy, it's not about you, but I need you to speak. So you speak into lives and those lives, they are changed and they go and they speak themselves and they get people healed. And that testimony reaches people all over the world where I cannot even go and visit. But you can. And when you do that, those people will go and do the same and when they do that, those people will go and do the same. Do you see what's going to happen? Oh man, I'm just, whoo. Yes, see it in your heart. He keeps us from dying. You just command it. Take your authority against it. Oh yeah, someone says, I know you've taught it before, but can you briefly explain how to use your body as a weapon? Well, here's the thing. This body is like a mobile uh, home, Right? I always say, and it's one of my books, are you your car? But it's coming out. Are you your car? No, you're not. Your car, you can use your car as a weapon. You can just hit someone and the person can die or be injured. Just like with, like with the car that you can use as a weapon, you can use your body as a weapon. You know why? The real you is in the spirit. It's the spirit man on the inside. No one can see it, but when you speak, we can hear it. If you speak those faith, spirit-filled, life-giving words, your soul is where your mind, your personality is. Okay, this body can do things. 
I can uh, grab something. I can take my pen, for instance, and I can hold it. I can do things with my body. How I act out the word, how I am a doer of the word, I do with my body. So I first get my heart into agreement with the word. So that's in my soul, my mind. And then I act it out. So how do I do it? I stand up. If, I, if, I, if it was that I couldn't stand up, I would stand up. You know? I was, uh, how do you say it? Do the things that you couldn't do. If you cannot lift your eyes, just try and open them. If your hands were like this, every single time, speak to your hands and then do this, do this, do this. You see? That's how you, that's how you use your body as a weapon. Because... The demons don't understand why you're still trying to move and do things when you're sick. But they don't understand what you understand. Because you know that you're not sick. You know that you're, you are the healed. Satan is trying to get sick. So this body needs to do what you tell it to do. If you couldn't lift your hands, your arms... Then just lift it. And I'm, I'm specifically, specifically not saying try to do it. Because if you try, that, that's, that's, not, that's not doing it. You just do it. Maybe the first day, nothing happens. You get like this. The se but the second day, maybe you see that, hey, it's just one millimeter up. Then you go two, three. You use your body as a weapon. Go and do the things that you couldn't do. Ask Holy Spirit. Okay, Holy Spirit, how, how can I use my body as a weapon? I did use my body as a weapon by acting it out, by going to, um, uh, to walk uh, to my door at first because I couldn't get outside. I walked my dog to the door and then she was just walking around in front of the house. You see, I was getting up. Going uh, 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 from the stairs by myself, I use my body as a weapon. Trying to do sit-ups, I use my body as a weapon. Trying to jump, I use my body as a weapon. Trying to uh, wash dishes, well, I say try, I just did it. So that's why I also fainted and those kind of things. I use my body as a weapon. So I hope that it's clear that while everything that you do, you use your body as a weapon. I hope that's clear. Hallelujah. Yes, take your sweet sleep. Take it, it's yours. Man, I had those kind of things. Just This is the last thing and then I'll go. I had that. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep because of the pain. I couldn't sleep because of the stitches and the operation that they did uh, to my body. I couldn't sleep. My body was like, I was, I was sleeping in a folded position that looks so strange, but my knees were up. There was like a, a cushion underneath and I was in a seated position. Otherwise, I couldn't sleep because of the pain and everything. And to get out of the bed was terrible because I was tired. But you know what I did? If I couldn't sleep, and I would wake up after like 10 minutes, half an hour. I would speak the word and I would listen to teachings. I would listen to teachings day and night. The teachings were, were on day and night. And it was all teachings because some people have asked me, well, it was how to receive God's best. It's like a five part Andrew has. And I was, I was on an Andrew Womack diet. So he was the only voice I heard. You've already got it in every single form that he had it. Every single form. Uh, believer's authority. But I listened to almost everything. But those were the things. And um, yeah, those were the things that I really, really listened to. And it just kept on playing. And when I would wake up, I would hear something that I would just need. I needed to hear it. You know, and I would store it in my heart, in my mind. And then I would go into the word myself. But I was speaking the word. So if you cannot sleep tonight, get into the word. I got into the word. Because the Bible also tells us that even in the night hours, we are in contact with Papa God. In Psalms, it tells us. So I was just doing that. I said, well, it's in the Word. I'm just going to do the Word. Yes, the Andrew Womack diet. <laughs> I just did that. That's why I tell you, if I'm telling you something and it clicks, you feel an empowerment, a stirring on the inside, go back and listen to it. I listened to 
maybe one um, teaching 16 times to 20 times. I write it down sometimes. I was just in it because I saw this guy know something that I need to know that was never ta taught me. So that's why I got into <laughs> an Andrew Womack diet. He doesn't even know, but it doesn't matter. He just did what he needed to do, what Papa God told him to do. And it saved my life because then I understood the word differently. I had authority over sickness and disease because it's already a done deal. You're already healed. People, I'm going to leave it at this because I will just go on and go on. I don't think there are uh, questions. If there are, you can just uh, ask it right now. But I just want to thank you so much for listening, for watching, for subscribing my YouTube channel. And just, you know, and check me out. I'm going to be on Healing Journey again. Uh, I think it's this, this Saturday again. So check that one out. Um, please give all the videos, not just my videos. It's, it's not me. You know, give the videos. Andrew Womack, Barry Ben, everyone you know from whatever and they're good, they're Christian. Give them a thumbs up. You know, then let's get the word viral together. Okay? Um, is there something I forgot? Let me think about it. <laughs> so 14th of November, I will place... Um, uh, tomorrow I will place like a uh, the, the, the time when you can live stream with us. If you're able, check it out. It's a healing service. I got translation so you can uh, check it out. That's a healing service and God's going to do great things. So I'm so, so happy about that. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Everyone, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. So much blessing to you and that you may be such a Big, big, big testimony for every single person you meet. And they will say, what happened to you? I want to have what you got. Yes? Okay, guys, see you tomorrow. Oh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Oh, man, I love you guys so much. And I, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to see you, meet you face to face in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, this is something. If I have not answered your email, your message, your uh, um, Instagram message, wherever you, you, you try to contact me and I have not done it, please don't be angry. I'm one person and because I take time. I take time to really answer every single email and I really go into length and I even go and, and uh, pray with people via messenger. So if you want to have a call with me, Send me an, an, uh, a message and I will schedule you in because everyone is on a different time zone. So that's also a little bit difficult because when I'm sleeping, other people are awake. So I really, my heart is really to help, to coach, to walk along with you. But there are a lot of people. So please, I will get back to you, right? Okay. <laughs> See you. <laughs> Love you. Thank you so much, Lucho. Thank you, everyone who watched and who will watch in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>